right, so now uh, Medina Spirit won the Kentucky Derby. Bob Baffert now has the record number of Kentucky wins as a trainer uh, in the history of the Derby. Medina Spirit. Yeah, big deal. Okay. Uh, next, we've got uh, Gaylord Gill and Randy Bosner doing their build along with the Bar Mills one kit. Uh, Gaylord, uh, Randy, thank you so much for doing this, and I'll turn it over to you guys. All right, Jim. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. It's always hard to tell if there are new people joining for the first time tonight, but we are co-facilitating, Randy and I. I'm going to be speaking tonight, but um, we both have been working on this project together, and we are a good ways through our project plan. We've done uh, intros and two prior build sessions. If you ever want to, if you are new to this and want to go back and check those out, it's all on YouTube. It's nicely organized now. You can find those and, and uh, watch them if you haven't seen them before. So a week ago, when we wrapped up, Andy, Randy asked us to uh, work on the interior bracing of our models and paint in the sub-assemblies to glue the walls together. So you're finally starting to get a structure that looks like what your plan was and to create a foundation. If you have any questions or issues, um, I'd ask you to hold them to the end here. We're gonna see if we have enough time to, to get to them. Uh, we, we ran over last time. We're gonna try to do better this time. So to, topics for tonight, we are just like Bob shared with us. We're gonna build some door assemblies, some window assemblies as they come with the kit. And we're gonna talk a little bit about detailing these. And I'll once again say the order that we're presenting these in is not necessarily the way you have to do it. Um, and point in fact, Bob just shared the idea of doing signage before you would put your walls together. It's, that sometimes is a excellent way to do it. So the doors are quite straightforward on this kit. We have some personnel doors, five panel doors and a four light door. And the main thing in this one is that if you are doing contrasting colors on your doors, remember to do your painting before you assemble. So in the center, you see what's going to be a blue door with the white panels and white trim. You wanna get that done before you put those together. Freight doors are also fairly basic. Uh, these are hinged doors that come in pairs, two different types. One idea on these is even though this door on the right comes as a complete pair, all one piece, you could choose to cut that apart and maybe show one door ajar as a little variation. The windows, you recall that our kit provides 10 light windows. That may not be what your plan calls for. So you're gonna to wanna to first trim off the unneeded panes from your sash assembly. Your plan might call for removing muttons to take what was four panes and make a single large pane. A good technique for doing the cutting out of the muntins is to use a chisel blade if you have one, but a number 11 exacto works fine too. I would brace a uh, straight edge against this. We didn't show it because it would have kind of covered up part of the photo, but uh, lay a straight edge against this so that you can pull the blade to you against the straight edge and get that nice and tight. It's a good technique to dig an edge in to the side and then rock it, in this case, left to right, rock that forward against the interior edge of the sash and it'll trim up nice. Since these are laser cut parts, there is a little bit of a de debris from the laser burning process and it's a good idea to scrape that off with a, either a blade or a small file. It's just, uh, makes a nice clean edge that way. And then you're going to 
glue your frame or trim pieces to fit. This kit is a little different. I, I noticed it in Bob's when he sh shared his uh, window assemblies. On this kit, the if you use the trim pieces as they come, the inner edge of the trim lines up pretty much flush with the inner edge of the sash. In other words, it covers that whole edge of the sash. A prototype window would have more of a reveal there. And actually that's what Randy did when he cut his apart. He used a little piece from one, one trim piece. They come in a U-shaped piece and a, a, a corresponding piece from another side so that he could spread those out just a little bit. But however you do it, whether you do it as the kit provides or spread out a little bit, you want everything to overlap equally. Here's just another, just an option for combining sashes to create a larger window. For double hung windows, you'd want to make up a complete sash and frame assembly first, and then use a piece of sash from another part of the uh, kit materials, and that creates the movable lower sash. So if you paint each of these separately and glaze them, you can then glue that lower sash behind the first assembly, allows you to do it as a partially opened window, which is a neat effect. Here's some recommendations for gluing the window glazing on. Here's Micromark's liquid PSA. This has nothing to do with your uh, annual physical. This, in ca this case, PSA stands for pressure sensitive adhesive. Uh, I have not used this, but Randy says it's really neat stuff. Just be aware that it, uh, it tacks up pretty quickly and once you stick it on, it's pretty well stuck. So we'll show you how to do that in a minute. Here's canopy glue that's been around a long time. Aileen's has also been around a long time, but this is also a relatively new product of theirs called Turbo Tacky Glue. But you know, the regular old Elmer's white glue works fine too. Just be sure you allow enough time for it to set up. So here's a good technique. If you take your painted sash and apply your glue to the back side of it and just press it on a field of the glazing material. Some, some people like to cut their glazing to size first, but this is a this is a little faster way and just as precise, actually more precise. So glue that on and once that's set up, then you can use scissors. If you'll note the, the rear side of the scissors is bracing now against the back of the sash. And as you cut, you can slice off the excess glazing and it it's, comes out trimmed right to the sash. I mentioned up here that another alternative to the window glazing that comes in this kit is clear styrene. I like that uh, in a 10,000th thickness. It is a stiff, a little bit stiffer product. Uh, if you have that, that's a good, a good glazing. We're gonna give you two approaches to installing your windows. One is to build up from the rear of the wall. So here's the wall of our structure lying down face down and we're dropping in our window assembly with the glazing the window sash is painted the glazing is attached we're dropping that in and we can touch a bit of glue in to hold it in place and that by light by laying it flat on the work surface we're making sure it's flush to the front later on now you can glue the frame to the front of the wall after this glue has set up and the advantage here is for that technique I mentioned earlier, if you want to spread your frames out a little bit, you've already anchored the inner sash and now you're putting the framing out around it. The second approach is to build up the sash and the frame as a single unit. In this case, you'd glue your sash behind your window frame, paint it, glaze it, and then that entire assembly can be placed into the front of the window opening. And it's just like you would do if you had a, 
injection molded plastic window. You're just gluing it in with the front and there's enough overlap here on the, on the frame to hold it in place. So two approaches. Let's talk about detailing. Those freight doors are going to need some handles. Uh, pretty simple way is to take some some wire and put a little bend around. Use your use the ends of your needle nose pliers. Clamp clamp the wire and you can bend it. Uh, make them long enough if make the legs long enough if you want to drill some holes so they're anchored nice. Um, you could represent hinges by just bits of wire that could represent the barrel of a hinge. That's all the part that would be visible. Of course, there are also our castings uh, that could make strap hinges that would go on here too. We're detailing windows. Most of us like to put something in that looks more like just an empty empty house. So uh, window shades are just simply uh, cut out from paper, printer paper, uh, larger scales. You might want to fashion a pull cord on that too. In the curtains, I scrape a lot of these off the internet. Um, they're, just, they're just printed off from various uh, advertisers that are, that are looking to sell you curtains. And so they can be glued on after the shades go on. Typically your shades are uh, behind the curtains as, as you're facing this from the inside. On my bar and grill that I shared with you before, I use cafe curtains. And so again, these are just paper cutouts. And then I glue down a piece of brass wire for the curtain rod. So here's some examples of what you might find on the internet if you're if you just do a search for window curtains all different uh, styles, different colors. You just want to cut these out so that you're cutting away what's in between and then you you'll wind up with two halves or in the case of this this one here you would just cut away the center part and and glue that all on. You, you just need to experiment a little bit to get them to size right um, as you as you print them out. You might consider some room details behind your windows. So here is my bar front. Uh, I did put a few figures in. I have a little trio here that's great at the front window that you can just see them uh, seated at a table with a waitress. I have another cluster of three people a little farther in. And this backdrop is simply a composite of some different interior photos. Once again, I found on the internet um, it doesn't have to make a lot of sense. Don't worry too much about getting uh, you know, it all oriented perfectly. In fact, I used uh, a couple copies of the same identical scene and just extended this a little bit to the right because I needed that extra length. And in this case, I mounted it to cardstock, formed it into a curve. I didn't try to, again, get the corner precisely. It's just it's just there to represent that there's something behind that. And here's a night scene from that same bar and grill. So don't worry too much about overdoing all those interior details. A small amount of the detail will convey the idea that you're looking to, that you've got something activity going on in there. Here's some more exterior details. Um, we'll probably hit a, f a few more that are that are uh, specific to the roof once we get on to the next week's uh, presentation. But these are some exterior details that apply to the walls. Here's a case where Randy's added some Venetian blinds to the inside of a window. He's got, rather than hinges, door glides for doors that open to each side. He's got a hoist beam above for perhaps loading a, a vehicle or unloading, exterior light. Here we've got a covered porch added. That's an entire assembly of itself. Um, if you don't like the straight uh, trim that comes with the kit, you might find some custom trim you could add. Again, some more curtains, entry steps. 
along the side of my bar and grill. So several examples here, a custom sign is obvious, is a obvious addition for a commercial building. Uh, entry steps that are a bit different here because it's a corner entry, they are curved. Uh, most scales have electric meters and, and other outside uh, uh, components that could be added. Here's an exhaust fan, just a, just a plastic casting. Uh, should the idea of lighting particular rooms can be done with view blocks inside so that cuts off and, and contains the light in just one place. And in my case, I had this concrete well around the door. So your assignment for next time is to go ahead and do the assembly of your doors and window frames and to paint and install on the walls these sub assemblies. And I do welcome you again to send photos. We've we got a couple of photos last time, uh, but send us something that shows what you're working on and, and how you're progressing. I think we do have some time for questions if anybody has some on the on what we just presented. Well, Gaylord, I appreciate it so very much, both what you and Randy are doing. And uh, if anybody does have any questions that they uh, haven't asked so far, uh, please send them by email to either Gaylord or Randy. Uh, here's their emails that they're putting up now and they'll uh, respond to you directly. So Gaylord, thank you so very much. Great job. Randy, right. I have a question. Go ahead. Yeah, hey, I know you're, uh, you've are you been involved in the building trade, so I'm pointing this one at you. Uh, can you tell me something about like the floors? Like how high is a floor? Uh, how high relative to what? Like if I'm if I'm making a two story building, how t you know how tall and oh. then how far up should the like where would the first floor end and the second floor okay. start? All right. What what's the nature of the building, Jamie? Uh, it's sort of a house, you know, like like a residential application. Yeah, like a residential house. Okay. Well. Depending on the age of the house, you know, modern houses are mostly eight foot. That's pretty standard, you know, from the floor to the ceiling. Um, but as you go back, you know, like like turn of the century houses and so forth, much more common to see 10 foot and even 12 foot ceilings. Okay. Of, and how does that floor. translate to like the outside of the house? So like how, you know. Well, once you know where your floor is, of course, on the first floor level. Uh, just, you know, add that height. And then I would, I would say for modeling purposes, just add about a foot for the thickness of the second floor, you know, the whole, the whole assembly. Okay. Uh, it's, it, it'll, in the real world, it's often less than that, but close enough for modeling purposes. So. Okay, thanks. Good enough. Well, I myself don't have a question, but it looks like I think I'm a little ahead of the class. Hey, good. That's great. Uh, now, uh, what do you? Uh, what would you use for uh, uh, modern glass? I guess it's called plate glass, and the, I guess the older style is uh, float glass. Uh, what do you? What could? You, what do you model? What What would you do to model float glass? Uh, in, in my case, I think at a modeling level, you, you're not going to see any uh, distinguishing characteristics between the two. Uh, the only thing that's going to ever show up is if you go way back and before float glass and things were a little wavy looking. You know, sometimes you see that in old, uh, you know, eight, uh, 19th century buildings and so forth. Uh, but I, I don't think that there's any reason to distinguish one from another. And like Gaylord said, you know, 10,000 styrene is a, is a real good workable surface. Um, something you might try uh, for any of you guys that have fussed around with uh, future floor, floor polish. Uh, some folks will use actual glass, you know, from uh, slide covers. I'm sure you've seen that done. Uh, the big advantage is that it's, it's glossier, you know, it gives a better reflection, but you might experiment with taking just a tiny little bit of the future 
and painting the face of your your styrene window blast with that it, it definitely gives it a, a better sheen you know a better uh, reflective characteristic so yeah i'm uh, i'm actually modeling the 18th century so that's why i was ah, I, okay but, you know it's it's I, I know about the wavy glass that's why i was okay so you're, you're, that was. You, you want wavy glass yes <laughs> okay uh yeah, I, have to think about that one I, I i don't have a good answer for that so can i interrupt real quick uh is can you see this model here that i'm holding near the camera we do yes. okay this is a paper and card build that i kit bashed from a clever models build i made a four wall building out of a triangular building now the windows are done exactly the same way you're doing your windows but one of the tricks that, uh, that I use on paper and card quite often is to just take the take a plain pa uh, packing tape, clear packing tape, and put a layer of packing tape over my window and then put the window uh, and then glue the window in from the inside. The reflection, I don't know if you can see the reflection on this, but the reflection of the packing tape makes it look just like glass and it's just nothing more than a printed window hmm. good and you know everything everything here as i say this is all done in paper and card and this is basically what i'm trying to show show people a different media to work with and anybody who's built a craftsman kit all the same all, you know all of the same rules apply. <laughs> thank Good. you. Thank you, time. Paul. Yeah, thanks, Paul. Uh, okay, I think, we, I, think we need, I think we need to move along right now. Yeah. Uh,